Howdy all you beard-loving book nerds. My name is Harrison and last night we didn't get enough sleep. So today we're getting a little slap happy. <laughs> you beard-loving book nerds. My name is Harrison and last night we didn't get enough sleep. So today we're getting a little slap happy. <laughs> Hey y'all, so Millie's being a little bit cuddly today and it's fantastic, but I thought that what we could do for Spooktober in this video is do a review of one of the most iconic book series related to the horror genre for kids, Goosebumps. I'd imagine most fans of Goosebumps in particular have read this book at one time or another or at least are familiar with the main character, but today we're going to be reviewing Night of the Living Dummy. So what I thought I'd do for this video is split it into three different parts. I'm going to talk about the things that I wasn't a fan of, the things that I was kind of surprised at for being so good, and then give you my final evaluation on the book. But let's get on to those things that were kind of horrifying, but not in the way we hoped or it was intended. So one of the things that I found really... Oh, are you jumping me up here? No. All right. Millie's decided not to jump so we can continue. <laughs> so Millie's with her mom now. All right, let me rethink. What am? I, what are the things I want to talk about? Goosebumps. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So one of the things that I found especially. Did you sneeze, Millie? <laughs> okay, y'all. One of the things I found especially cringy in this book, which is understandable considering it's an older book, is the language used. Um, and of course I don't mean graphic or adult language, but more antiquated. I'll read you just one small section of it that had me rolling when I first read this. Mr. Wood is cool looking. That gray suit on your dummy is the pits. All right, Stein, I'm gonna level with you. I grew up in the 90s. I don't think I ever heard anyone use the term the pits. Maybe it's because I grew up in the South in a more rural community, but I'm kind of thinking that you don't really, or at least at this point, didn't understand how kids talk to one another. But, you know, I mean, there's other great things and your legacy has lasted, so it's obviously not all bad, but the language is a little bit um, cringy at times. Your review's doing great so far. Really? You think so? It's the pits. <laughs> So another thing that I kind of found particularly cringy was the way that the parents reacted to one another and to the kids. I get that the whole idea that Stein's going for here is the whole parents that don't listen to their kids about supernatural things. I do find this a little bit cringy and a little bit problematic actually, just when you start considering more traumatic real life scenarios in which a kid may not be listened to by their parents if you further that stereotype like say you know for something that could be like abuse if they grow up reading these books and believe that adults aren't going to believe them that's a very problematic trope to further it really i know it was written by an older man but sometimes i feel like it was him catering to his audience and giving the parents more childlike dialogue. But also, it does kind of add a little bit of comedic relief in it. I know at one point the mother referring to her husband after giving up on cutting an onion as a crybaby. But also, you know, at some point, you gotta think that the parents have to realize that if both of the daughters are... It'll come to me. If both of the daughters are claiming that this is actually happening, as ludicrous as it may sound, at the very least they could look into it. If I had told my parents that there was a monster in the closet, at the very least they would have gone to investigate. But in this book, we don't even see the parents really paying much mind to these dolls. And I know that it seems a little bit ludicrous in what's being said. I wonder how many times I've said ludicrous so far. We might do a counter. But yeah, it just didn't seem realistic 
But that also kind of leads into the third thing that I found kind of cringy in this book, but also kind of liked. The kids are incredibly unlikable. Lindy and Chris, our main characters, the twins, which is already a great premise. I mean, you know, a lot of times we see shows like Sister, Sister, and they do well whenever they have twins or the Swede Life. Like, you've already got it set up to where we should enjoy them. They're just brats. I think that's kind of the point. It kind of makes it a little bit easier to see them have bad things happen to them if they're kind of bratty. And it also kind of creates this narrative as well going throughout the book of... Sometimes I pause like this so it's easier to edit out. What did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of creates almost like a Brothers Grimm moral to the story, having these kids be so rotten to one another. It, throughout the book, creates this necessity for the twins to start trusting one another after trust has been betrayed more than once. And so it is kind of creating a good moral in that way. I don't think it fully balances out the whole parents will never listen to you, narrative that we see in this but it is an older book so i give stein the benefit of the doubt okay y'all so here's a few of the things that i found actually really compelling in the book and i was a little surprised i was kind of gearing myself to not enjoy goosebumps and to think that the hype was a bit too much for a children's series that i was afraid wasn't going to be all that great but there's some really funny parts to it i mean it, it is scary but I think there's also enough humor balance throughout that makes that difference and that's one thing I really love here. There's actually a section where Stein is kind of as the kids say throwing shade at Stephen King. The mother falls asleep while reading a Stephen King novel which I have had a fan confirm they personally don't believe that Stephen King's novels are his best work. I personally have read Firestarter and really loved it, so I haven't read enough of his to know, but I do think it's funny that, you know, they have an actual real life rivalry and that Stein would go there as far back as this book to kind of throw a, throw a shot at Stephen King. I did find that kind of funny in a meta sort of way. So I actually really enjoyed the way that Stein took a common trope and flips it on its head. It's the tried and true crying wolf trope, where usually you see one character playing pranks on others and then not being believed when the actual event occurs. With the twins, it's actually the sister Lindy who is playing the prank on her sister Chris, taking her doll, which is named Mr. Wood, so cleverly named, and making it seem like he is the living dummy. Also does it a bit with Slappy too, which is a great way of foreshadowing that he is also a possessed dummy. This happens not once, but twice is Chris fooled into this. And then when Mr. Wood actually does, without a shadow of a doubt, come to life, it is Chris who isn't believed. And it's Chris who is the one who's blamed for all of this. I don't know if I'm in love with that, but I do think it is a new take on it, and it definitely opens up the conversation in regards to this book. I can't believe I'm really saying opening up the literary conversation on a Goosebumps book, but I am. Yeah, I thought that was actually really well done. Goosebumps is peak literature. No. So the last thing that I really enjoyed in this book is also the fact that Slappy, the doll that we know and love, is not the main character of this story. It's actually more centered around Mr. Wood. And so even though Slappy is introduced at the very beginning, kind of giving that foreshadowing, a lot of it is more centered on the idea of Mr. Wood being the poltergeist doll, the animated doll, the possessed, possessed, that's the right word, possessed doll. It actually leaves room for a really fantastic sting that Stein does at the very end. The fact that Slappy at the very end, after they finally, spoilers if you haven't read this, but I feel that Goosebumps is so ubiquitous now that if you haven't read it yet and you're reading or watching my review of it, I'm sorry. But the fact that Mr. Wood has finally been destroyed after it seeming nearly impossible for the girls to come back for Slappy just to say, 
something along the lines of, I'm glad you finally got rid of that dummy. I thought that was actually a really fantastic ending, and I know that's another argument that people make against the Goosebumps books, that he always has to kind of add a twist at the end. This is one of the few Goosebumps books that I've read in some time, so I can't speak to the validity of that. All I know is that in this book, it makes a ton of sense, especially considering that it very much so lent itself to having more sequels, which I have not read, but I hope that they're just as good. All right, y'all, to wrap this up, I'll give you my final thoughts on the book and my personal star rating. We never use stars. So it was a little difficult to get through in the beginning because the kids are brats. However, the farther you progress into it, the more I find it compelling. And, you know, despite some of the language used being antiquated it's still a really fun book and i think it's a understandable why it got so many sequels so all in all i'm gonna go ahead and give this book four creepy possessed dolls hiding in that one weird dark room in your grandparents house out of five so that was my review of rl stein's night of the living dummy don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so that you get all of our content as it comes out. Don't forget also to drop us a comment and let us know what your favorite Goosebumps book is. I know you got a lot to choose from. Also, don't forget, we are on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. And, as always, stay snazzy, book nerds. Peak snazziness. You don't even have a bow tie. I'm listening. Like and subscribe! <laughs> and comment if you want more of me. Today's Nancy book nerds. If anything ever happened to me, you could definitely take over the channel. And I will.